10, 10, 10. So I was 10. Yeah. So. Our, uh, our 100 listeners are mostly local. <laughs> so. We're up to 100. <laughs> We're up to 100. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get that <laughs> we have you're I mean, doing some big numbers here yeah. zach triple digits <laughs> is a whole new shit you're gonna tier. fill up mississippi studios they're not gonna know what to do <laughs> <laughs> off a of size oh. 10 holy shit all right all well, right if we're all good you want to get into it yeah we can we can start the episode welcome back to size 10 we're here in the studio we got a special zoom episode because we have a special guest I'll intro him in a minute, but for right now, I'm Nick Scalzone. You can find me on Instagram at Nick Scalzone Comedy. And I'm Bjorn RG. You can find me on all platforms, Bjorn RG Comedy. And you can see our guest this week, tomorrow, Wednesday, the Get 19th, the <laughs> at Mississippi Studios, performing his show, The Crossword Show, featuring two Portland comics, Shane Brendan and Arlo Warehouser. Um, tickets are available at crosswordshow.com. Um, please welcome, I know him from Epic Rap Battles of History. I don't know where you know him from, but we have the hilarious Zach Sherwin on the, on the episode. Hi guys. Thanks for having me. And if you're listening at home and you're like, wait, I don't know where I know this guy from, if at all, then you're not doing anything wrong. It's just whatever, <laughs> if and how that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> all right what what do you have a uh, like some handles and stuff where people can find you on social sure sure i'm um zach sherwin uh on everything there's no k's it's z-a-c-h and sherwin is also not spelled with a k um so yeah i'm there on twitter and instagram and um and then the crossword show uh is does not have its own social media but crosswordshow.com um or as we like to say in the show crosswords how dot com um <laughs> So uh, is is where you can find ticket links and that kind of thing. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What is the crossword show? We haven't yeah. like I haven't seen it, and it's coming up. So like, what is it? What's it? What are yes. people in for? Of course. And needless to say, if you guys want to come, um, we control the guest list. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and listeners, if you want to come, free free guest list all around. <laughs> uh, that, just kidding. Just easing into the comedic <laughs> flow. Um, so the crossword show is basically. Um, I host as a panel of guest comedians, in this case, the resplendent Shannon Arlo, which we're super excited about. Um, I host the show while a panel of guest comedians actually solves uh, a real crossword puzzle um, live on stage um, in front of a crowd. They're, everything's like projected on a big screen so that you can follow the action. Um, and you can put quotes around the word action if you want to for mm -hmm. the process of solving a crossword puzzle. But um, every time they... Uh, Every time the guest panelists like figure out a word from one of the crossword clues, we go down a little rabbit hole of comedy and music and wordplay and trivia. And then it all kind of ties around at the end and there's like a big grand finale sort of thing. And I will also say, because um, Nick, we were talking about the musical comedy part of my of my jam before this, that um, the clues all work just like normal crossword puzzle clues do. But they also are rhyming rap lyrics. So there's like an across clues rap and a down clues rap over the course of the show. Oh, that's so, fantastic. Um, thanks. I'm, yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> so do you perform the rap at some point? Like oh, when yes. the crossword puzzle is solved, like is that everybody's reward? No, for... that's actually, that's how we kick off the show. And, oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's like a musical preview of the clues. And then I guess I'm giving things away here. But um, the standard grand finale for the crossword show is... Um, uh, an answers rap that cleverly incorporates all of the words from the grid that the panelists figured out over the course of the show. And it also ties in with like whatever the theme of the puzzle was. It's a whole thing. Okay. So did you come up with the show? Is this like your baby? Um, it is, it's, it's my baby, but like all babies, you know, there was more than one parent required. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just trundling along in my little, musical comedy and writing world. And then one day out of the blue on Twitter, a guy who makes crossword puzzles for a living hit me up and was like, hey, your tweets seem to contain an obsessive amount of wordplay. Um, <laughs> I make crossword puzzles. Do you think it would be fun to collaborate sometime? And so that was kind of like the spark for it all. And then I told another friend about the idea and he was like, that should be a show. And then I, you know, long story short, now it is what it is now. Um, but yeah, I, I write it and, um, and I have a, I have a co-producer, Dominic, um, and okay. he'll, he'll be in Portland too. 
Oh, very cool. It's awesome. Where did sorry, I, I like I produced a bunch of local shows in Portland and I'm just curious, like where did you where did you start it? Did you start it like in a small space and then just like and then start to tour it? Or how did that work? Bjorn, that's such a nice question. Thank you. <laughs> um I live in Los Angeles and um our first show was in like December November of twenty eighteen at the Dynasty Typewriter Theater. Um which is a okay. an amazing, amazing place in LA that has, as far as I'm concerned, like the coolest shows happening in town. And um, it's our only home in Los Angeles. And then, yeah, pretty quickly we started touring it. Like, I, I don't know, can you call it touring if it's still in state? But we started doing right. shows in the Bay Area and we've done a lot on the East Coast, but we have a new agent and she's starting to get us work in other places, including Portland. So um, yeah. we're really excited. I've done Bridgetown a bunch of times and um, I love being in Portland and the crowds are smart and cool and um, I'm not pandering. <laughs> no, no. It, I mean, if any town is going to do big numbers for a crossword puzzle yeah. show, it's here. Like that's kind of, that's kind of our vibe. That's kind of how I here. feel. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't mm -hmm. have to sell them too hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, they'll just see crossword puzzle and be like, yep, that's, I, I bought these fake glasses for a reason, dude. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go remember some words. <laughs> it's like trivia for people who are nerds about words. Yeah. That's what a crossword puzzle is. That's, I, I don't know. I'm I was, so bad at crossword puzzles. I am terrible at them myself as well. <laughs> My parents used to do it. My mom still does that word game or one of those. Yeah. N Wordle. Not words. With, yeah. Wordle. She's obsessed. Mm. Oh, Wordle is fun. She's my girlfriend does to it. Wordle sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and I, sometimes I kind of crush at Wordle. Mm. I'm good at I'm good at things where you like eliminate things. Like I'm good at the logic side of Wordle. Mm. Is like that what a crossword puzzle is a little bit <laughs> sort of, but no. There's like a there's like the the same part of your brain that likes chess, like is good at like the elimination side of Wordle. Like right. those puzzles you got in elementary school that were like. Jim likes apples, but not oranges. And oh, then you I had like a grid and you had to cross crush stuff those, up. dude. I yeah. love those. Those are fun. Those cool. Are fun. Yeah. Or like Sudoku. I'm fired at Sudoku. Well, Interesting. <laughs> those are different parts of like the puzzle yeah. solving universe. I agree. They're like related, but not um, not the same. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm, look, I'm not trying to sell you guys on my show, uh -huh. but I will say an important thing for me about it is that you don't have to be like a crossword ace to do it. In fact, I like it's so funny to watch my guests pick different lanes. Some people are really into being competitive. Um, some people just want to make as many jokes as they can fit in. But then some people choose this lane of um, like, I am a dumb idiot and I have no idea how to do crossword puzzles. And there is no way to get an audience on your side more than to choose that. And so I don't say to people beforehand that that's like a thing you should do. But when I watch people choose it, I'm like, nice. This person mm. knows what they're doing. That that would be mine. I mean, like, because I edit these videos of our podcast and a lot of the times the like clips we use are when I say something stupid <laughs> and then we just roll with it. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the last one is like I messed up the I said instead of no country for old men. Wait. Oh, yeah. Instead of the yeah, <laughs> no country for old men, you said old uh, country for no men. Yeah, old country for no <laughs> men. And I was like, that's the new that's the new alt-right show. <laughs> to make us concerned about cancel culture. <laughs> Half of our clips are just me saying something stupid that doesn't make any sense. And then I just have to bite my tongue and just post it on the internet where it is forever. <laughs> uh, but it's a good time. It is. It is. My my. is. I'm kind of a dumb dumb, so I would definitely pick that lane every single time. <laughs> it's very rewarding to watch somebody make a mistake. It feels, it feels great. So crosswords are you, so do you do like do you do like the the famous ones like the New York Times do you do that one every week are you like a big crossword guy or like how's guys these are you're you're good hosts these questions make me feel like I'm being paid attention to well I don't know that much about crosswords I know that I feel dumb when I do them and so I stop and do something else and that like I've never really you do gone. Them. The Pass Monday it. crossword, because it's easier. Sometimes, but I can't even get that one. And so I'm like, this is the easy one? Fuck! And so I like, I'm, I feel bad about myself, and then I just go and do something else. I go do Sudoku that I'm good at. 
Yeah. And I'm like, never mind. I am a smart boy. And Put some then, X's in some boxes of logic grids. Oh, um, yeah. I don't, I would say that I like, oh no, I, I can just finish the sentence. I would say that I like crosswords, but don't love them. And um, I think it's like seemly for me to have a little distance from the material. You know what I mean? Like if I were super standout about crossword puzzles and I'm also like hosting a show that's like, look how amazing these are. It's important for the host, I think, to be able to like stand to have the piss taken out a little bit. So um, I like crossword puzzles. I did do the New York Times one for a while um, just because I felt like it was important to like be literate in the realm. But mm -hmm. um, I don't do it on a daily basis anymore. Um, I, I am addicted to spelling bee. Have you ever played that word game from the New York Times? No. No. What is that? Um, it's <laughs> let's let's do your listeners the favor of <laughs> me not explaining the spelling bee rules. It's nerd, nerd shit that you can subscribe to, and it's out right. if you want it. It's fun <laughs> and addictive, but um, yeah. Um, and then beyond the huge ones, there is this cool and increasingly like expansive world of indie crosswords that's like there's a boom happening in crossword puzzles right now and it's been oh. going on for a while and there's like crossword puzzles like the big major ones are sort of like the vanguard of um you know like will shorts is like a older white straight dude mm -hmm. and crossword puzzles like so much else in the culture have expanded way beyond that and so there's all these cool there's like one called queer crosswords um there's one called the incubator I-N-K, there's a word pun there, of course. Mm -hmm. And it's all like women and um, like cis and trans and woman aligned constructors. So it's just like, you know, like flowering out in all these directions and it's super cool and great. So mm -hmm. there is a big crossword world out there and I didn't know about it before I made up this show and started hosting it, but I've been happy to, uh, you know, immerse. Yeah. No, I like that because I assume with anything like that, there's got to be, got to be like people who are stoked about it. I'm still just like, and yeah, so, like Portland's the right city. For oh, you. 100%. <laughs> there's, there's probably like you did some yeah. like Google thing and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like most of that resides in Portland. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I read your Wikipedia before, like before this. Mm. And uh, your personal life in Wikipedia is lives in L.A. is a vegan. So you'll uh, forget about the first half, but that second half you'll do good here. Oh man, um, you'll I have know a good a time about veganism in Portland. I decided to be there. <laughs> it's popular. It, yeah, you know, that's what it are... says on my personal life section. Yeah, that's your whole personal life. I don't know if you're if you're straight, if you're gay, if you love somebody, if you hate everybody. No, no, nothing about that. I don't know where you were born. Like, nothing, pansexual, but I know you're a vegan. Hate everyone. Okay, <laughs> there we go. It's hilarious. I'm not gonna say <laughs> Wikipedia what the... fucking updated. <laughs> I'm not. You, it's too bad you didn't get to come in person because uh, our studio is very close to a couple of vegan businesses. Is yeah, that true? Is there any place in Portland of which that cannot be said? I feel well, like like no, vegan you, exclusive. You could throw uh, like, uh, uh, a plant based yeah. rock and hit a vegan place from just about anywhere. Yeah, uh, we but, we don't we don't divulge exactly where we <laughs> record uh, because we have all this equipment in here. <laughs> oh yeah, that's really smart. And it's not like the most secure building, so <laughs> But by the, way, by the way, pansexual vegan who hates everyone is the person for Portland. That's, I think that's it. That's that's the guy. So I, I, I'm not actually pansexual and I don't actually hate everybody, but I am actually a vegan. All right. That part's real. That part's real. Well, Does again, that factor into your fashion choices? Like, do you buy vegan only shoes? Oh, like, I forgot. Shoes, right. Shoes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We're still a shoe podcast. Yeah, yeah, we, had yeah. you, we had you think we're a crossword podcast there. That's the old bait and switch. <laughs> That's nice. It's like I've been um like at a sleep you've been at a sleepover at my place and now I'm like coming over for yours. Yeah. Let me step into the shoe house. Um yes, I do I haven't bought leather shoes in a really, really long time. Um I definitely pay attention to it and care about it. Okay. So what's your, what are your like go-to, what are your go-to shoes? Well, um, mostly I am like dorky enough that um, my go-to shoes are like running shoes. Because um, I run, but I'm also mm -hmm. the kind of dork who just wears running shoes around. I, I mean, 
It's a light level of dorkdom, but it is slightly dorky. It's not like a fashion forward choice to be like a mm-hmm. running shoe and jeans guy. And yet that's me. Um, yeah. If I want to go a little more stylish, I'll wear like white Adidas, uh, still running shoes. But like, a, I, uh, but that's that's kind of my like if I'm trying to look a little bit cooler lane. Mm. And then I do own a pair of optic white Chuck Taylor um, all stars because it's obligatory for a person of my ilk to do so. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and yeah, then, I guess that's a high top that's all canvas, all right? canvas, that's yeah. all canvas, canvas and rubber. And yeah. then your your Adidas are probably like a knit, I would assume. Yes, I think so. It's definitely all synthetic. Yeah, I feel um, like the Ultra Boost has to be vegan. Yeah. There's no leather on the Ultra Boost. So. Not that I know. I, I actually want to at, pick your brains a little bit on some yeah. on some like kick know-how type stuff. So sure. is how uncool is it for me to call them kicks? Is that um <laughs> No, dude, you're a professional rapper. You could call your kicks whatever you want. You could be like Yeah. I define shoe-based <laughs> slang coolness. Okay. Great. Yeah. No, you're you're uh, yeah, you're so, part so of this the is culture, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Anyone yeah, who's been you're with the this streets far out here. <laughs> so, I feel like this is more a philosophical question about uh-huh. like life, big picture. But you know, like the specific is the universal. So perhaps you'll be able to pro- provide some insight from your shoe based perspective. Oh, you I probably brought... are friends with Mike Kaplan, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Staying all these fancy words again, Bjorn. You know how I feel about that. <laughs> Here I'm leaning in and Nick is just like, oh, this dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's just, I think in my head I had to say it, you know? Totally. And I know Nick's a word old guy, so, um, <laughs> you know, he, he can hang. So I bought a pair of shoes that in my mind I call show shoes. And they're like in the box. Mm-hmm. And I have only worn them a handful of times, a foot full of times. And I put them on like backstage, walk on stage. The only mm-hmm. distance they travel is inside from the green room to the stage. They're bright white Adidas. I I should have checked. Hold on. I took a picture of the of them on my phone earlier today so I can tell you what they are. So I'll look that up. But Perfect. <laughs> I think I'm too I'm very obsessed with them remaining pristine. And it's like an anxiety when I wear them. And I feel like this is like it would be good for me to be like, you buy shoes to wear and they get scuffed up. But can you impart some wisdom from the world of maybe having thought about this a lot more than me and school me on how to think about this the right way? No, there's a lot of people that think about it that same way that like keep their shoes really clean, especially white shoes. Yeah. Because they they're impossible to keep clean if you ever take them outside. Like we've talked to a lot of comics on this show and like a lot of us have show shoes. Like, you're not alone on that one. Hmm. Like, in that the wintertime, yeah. I will totally do that. I'm like, I bring a backpack to shows, and I keep, like, my shoes in there. And, like, I'm on bullshit, like, bar shows. <laughs> like, I'm not even, like, performing. No, it's like, you're no one on can amazing see. bar shows. Uh, amazing bar shows. You have to manifest shows. things, Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm opening for local headliners. There you go. <laughs> and you run two amazing shows. Uh, but I... So we we have our own term for that. We usually save this to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but like we call those pavement princesses, uh, <laughs> which is it's so the term is actually from the truck community. If you drive like a big, dumb, lifted truck, um, a term of not in what's the opposite of endearment like uh uh, uh, making fun of uh, a derogatory term mm. that you could say to someone with one of those trucks is to call their truck a pavement princess, wow. yeah. which means it's, it's a m- synonym to mall crawler. <laughs> yeah, mall <laughs> crawler. Yeah. In oh, case you're, I uh, love it. Yeah, yeah. It's for guys who have a big truck with big stupid wheels, and then they just never take it on dirt. <laughs> they just drive it on the road. Yeah. So we we actually have it's too. If you were in studio, we would give you one of the stickers. But we have pavement princess stickers for our show. Oh my it's, god! It's uh, one of the terms that we. So at the end of the show, we usually ask uh, if it's a pavement princess or are you going to blow the back out? Because we also like to talk about rap music. Yeah. <laughs> and they <laughs> seem to say that a lot in rap songs, and it feels like a bit much. <laughs> you know, like. Uh, really? You want your back blown out? Like, that's a good thing? But so, 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 
So not to jump ahead to the segment yeah. at the end, but what yeah. choice is the guest being asked to make? If your pair of shoes are pavement princesses, are you going to blow the back out by wearing exactly? Them yeah, like yep. are you going to mm. treat them? Are you going to baby them or and like try to keep them pristine, or are you just going to not give a fuck and just wear them until they wear them till they're done? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, most people who are into sneakers typically have a lot of shoes that they kind of keep nice and you know only wear on a nice day or whatever or like, right or like if they're a performer only wear them on stage and then have some like kind of daily drivers mm -hmm. that you wear pretty often daily drivers it's so interesting that it's like transportation metaphors but i mean they're that might you just wear them because on your feet. we like cars and we like, like cars and we <laughs> like so i'm just like those are the words that are in my head <laughs> yeah though i mean they are on your feet which are you know the most demo the most democratic form of transportation there is. Exactly. My I'm just for the earth. That's when right. I walk out to my pickup truck to get fucking 17 <laughs> miles <from> the <laughs> <laughs> My Adidas's are supernovas. Okay. Okay. What are those? You know those? those up? Uh, no. <laughs> I, that name sounds familiar. I'm in a I think um, I've yeah, I've heard the name, but I'm let's Supernova Adidas. Yeah, no, there's Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, those are cool. They got the they got the three stripes. They're just white with the three stripes. Yeah, they're very and they got white. a boost. I they look they like can. they got boost in the heel. They're nice to stand on for like an hour and a half on stage. I think mostly that I think These mostly ones? they yeah yeah yeah. These here. I, yeah, though they're all. I might have taken a picture of the wrong box. Those look like the those. Okay, so the ones we're looking at now are like my ones that I wear. They're like the middle. Um. Yeah, but th that's the exact model that you've got pulled up. The white with okay. the black stripes. Ah. Yeah. My nice show shoes are some other thing. Mm. Um, even nicer. I must have swapped boxes. But um, I feel like it's mostly psychological. Like, I'm like, these are the nicest pair of shoes I own, and it's going to make me feel like I'm dressed up to wear them, even though technically they're, like, a fashionable running shoe. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. The crowd no, probably can't tell the difference between that and the pair of shoes you're sharing on screen right now, both of which <laughs> I own. But to me, it's like night and day. Yeah. No, white shoes definitely like pop on stage. Mm. I know there's the old story about, um, you know, Eddie Griffin, the comedian. Mm. He used to like back when he was really big, I think early to early to mid 2000s. Part of his rider was a fresh pair of white on white Air Force Ones. Whoa. For each show, like he would request like seven wow. pairs from the comedy club for the weekend. Oh, and for it, each show, for each show, for every show. It was like it's one of those things I've heard about on like other comics podcasts, like like you know big name comics that know Eddie uh, Griffin, and it was like one of those things that everybody heard about and was just like, what? Oh my god! <laughs> wow! How much is a pair of Air Force Ones? I think at the time like eighty or ninety bucks. But still, that's like six hundred dollars mm. worth of shoes. Wow, <laughs> which is hilarious. Wow. But yeah, he needed a fresh pair of white on whites for every show, and like you can see it in one of his specials. He had the, just a big white on whites, and they they were like there was like a glow from his feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bring that on stage with mm -hmm. me every time. Yeah, that, uh, I'm gonna bring that energy with me every. Yeah, time. no, Eddie Griffin was. Do you remember Dr. Dre, The Chronic 2001? There was the skit. Where he was like the biggest hoe on planet motherfucking Earth. That's mm. Eddie Griffin. Mm. <laughs> In case you, that's a there's a hip hop reference to Eddie Griffin. He he was on 2001 doing skits. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Which is, I love that hip hop artists have like comedians come in and do skits. Yeah. Did you got some more examples? Um. Yeah. Jay Z had Cedric the Entertainer. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of Threats on the yeah, Black album. Absolutely. Um, who else? I'll There's tell definitely you definitely more. I'll give you a I'll give you the rapper you name the comedian. Okay. Method Man. Ooh. Is this too hard? Yeah, I can't this think might of be it. too hard. I can't think of that many examples, so it's not gonna be a Okay, very long quiz. give me a couple more. I have like maybe one or one or two more that I'll know. On uh, Method Man's second album, Tikal okay. Two Thousand. Okay. Uh, judgment day uh there was a there was a long chris rock sketch about how many rap names method mm. man has oh okay mm -hmm. well there's chris rock has done one on another album too he was on uh kanye uh dark twisted fantasy mm. he was in the end of the blame game 
Mm-hmm. The whole bit where it's like Yeezy taught me, where he was like asking this chick where she learned oh, how to that's how right. to get her yeah, right. back blown out, and uh, apparently Yeezy taught her. That's right, Yeezy taught me. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that was Chris Rock. I haven't thought about that in a while. Um, <laughs> the rapper Your Old Droog is he on your radar? He is not. No. He he's, has a he's, fun name. Yes. <laughs> he's much less famous than any of the rappers we've talked about so far. Mm-hmm. But he's had a he had an album that had like a recurring Anthony Jesselnik um, sketch thing happening. That's amazing. Um, was it just Anthony Jesselnik like telling his jokes? It was like rap lyrics, and it was like, "Have you ever dropped a baby?" And then it was like more rap. <laughs> <laughs> if memory so serves, it was like a fake radio station or something like that like you're listening to yod radio or something like that it's it's been a while since i listened to it he was like a radio dj character okay Mm -hmm. that's pretty cool yeah yeah Yeah. if Um, you could get any like comic comic to do a skit on one of your rap albums who would it be oh my god wow i I, I made this question no, up on the I love, spot. I love this. No, I'm, I, I'm spitballing questions here. I, I don't, Bjorn's playing with Zoom. I, no, I can't questions. figure out how to get out of screen share mode. I think oh. we're still in it, and I can't figure it out. I think it's still just sharing the screen, and I it, it is. I me. updated it, and it's different. And, oh, that's and it's it's not working. You really just wanna... hit escape, and you like, and you can get out of it. Uh, and really I really cannot... want to compliment you on how seamlessly Nick just picked up the hosting ball and ran with it. I mean, there wasn't even a hiccup. You were smooth as silk. What a yeah. team. No, we're, uh, I, I've been, we've been saying this. We're by far the best podcast in Portland. <laughs> we are. Uh, Studio and... is on point. Yeah. Our, our skills are unrivaled. Yeah. Yeah, this is. Take that, Shane. Yeah, Shane. <laughs> Tell Shane that shit. <laughs> Tell him we said that. <laughs> Shane's been on the show. He should come back on the show, honestly. So, anyway, um, rapper or a comedian. Oh, you know, I realized that I had, um, I have an album that has comedians on it. Um, okay. So, I have an album that has songs. Uh, my album is called Rap with an exclamation point, and it features. Um, Ken Reed, an amazing comedian from Boston who hosts the um, TV Guidance Counselor podcast. And okay. um, Matt Knudsen, an amazing L.A. comic. And Josh Gondelman, a prominent and accomplished New York comedian. The other two are prominent as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take this bullshit cop-out answer to your question instead <laughs> of coming up with a new comedian to have him. On one of my no, I think dollars. that's an even better answer to be like, I've already done that. You guys should have done more homework. I- what are you even <laughs> talking about? <laughs> I also yeah. think I'm done releasing rap albums forever. I think okay. they were a different career phase. And now it's like the crossword show scratches all my creative itches. And I still get to do musical stuff in it. Okay. That's, that's actually, that's really interesting. So what... What brought you into the rap world and then what made you transition out of it and do crossword instead? I got into rap when I was like 10 and like many a little Jewish kid, uh, Mm -hmm. I just was like, this is the best. It's so exciting and it makes me feel things that I can't even articulate yet, but I just, it's all I want to listen to. And so then I like would rap with my buddies in high school and college. And then I started a comedy group, a sketch group with some friends in college And we like we toured for a few years on the college circuit and made like a subsistence or barely below living doing that. And um, I started writing. I had like been writing raps, but I always was like, Bjorn's sad about the screen share. You know, I'll just report. (laughs) Sad. What are you seeing? Just from my end, (laughs) I've got you guys. I'm in gallery mode. You guys are pulled as far over as I can get it, and there's just like a tiny image of a shoe, which is nice as a reminder for me of what podcast I'm on. So So I really don't feel bad about it. I have no idea what it's recording. It's probably recording me just clicking on things and trying to minimize (laughs) and make things bigger. Yeah, I don't remember what Zoom records. You just hit escape and. And then it usually goes back and it's not going back. Uh, oh. I updated Zoom and I haven't been on in months. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. The world kind of came back. And so Zoom yeah, was like, we're like hey, back burner shit. <laughs> just, so yeah. they might be seeing just like you guys talking while I'm just <laughs> clicking on things. Well, I literally don't know what to do with this. This is this is. Eh. 
I have you no know, idea what just, it's recording. Let's just keep going because this is. I'm having a good time. All right, I'm, I, I am so. too. This is awesome. I'm uh, yeah. So anyway, you were so you and your college buddies. My college buddies are doing sketches, yeah. and I was still writing raps, but I was getting increasingly comf- uncomfortable with being like just like a white dude bragging about how good my rap skills were, which was like what I did before I was like, oh, I could write little comedy raps and that might Mm. be a way. And so I wrote my first one and then I kind of saw the lane and I did that for a while and it was great. Um, It lasted for a time. And then I kind of feel like I just sort of phased out of it. You know, like I, I, I outgrew, like the whole thing of my act was like, I wanted to write raps where people would be like, who would ever, it's so absurd, the contrast of how implausible it is to hear a guy rapping about this, but he's actually kind of good at rapping. That was like my <laughs> whole shtick. And mm. um, it was satisfying for a time. And then eventually I was just like, I can't do this anymore. And I was honestly kind of adrift creatively, like in the months before the crossword show idea came along. Mm. And I was like, I don't know, I guess I'll become a vet. Like I thought I wanted to be in seventh grade or a marine <laughs> biologist. You're just like, yeah, good 10, 15 years of rapping. And then I think I'm going to heal some cats. Yeah. That's, <laughs> there um, are sick cats in the world. Why am I writing need... raps about silly things when I could help a cat? Um, you could rap to the cats and it would make them feel better. Quietly while they're recovering from anesthesia. Here's my yeah. latest. Um, yeah. <laughs> But like, uh, let me let me rub this medicine in your ear, and then let me rub these lyrics in your ear, motherfucker. Yeah. Let's go. Shit is fire, bro. Take that, <laughs> sedated. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was very creatively adrift, and then the idea came for the crossword show, and I was like, "Oh, this was like the thing I was waiting for." Um, so not to be t- whatever, I'm self conscious about sounding so earnest about it, but I really, it's like it does all the things I want to do. It has comedy and music and wordplay and like those are the things that i've been doing for my whole um yeah all along so it's a nice thing things coming together kind of project yeah no that seems awesome i'm i'm excited i kind of i want to go well i hope you can yeah Um, we usually record on wednesdays we're gonna maybe have to figure that out because i really want to go i'm throwing your whole schedule off so that's okay i'm i'm stoked on this it seems like a fun time so can I take the wheel for a second and, yeah. and yeah. kind of like make the Venn diagram of sneakers and crossword show kind of happen yes. for a second here? So, okay. So I said before that I'm not like bonkers about crossword puzzles themselves, but I do really like wordplay and like I came from a very bookish family and like reading is a thing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I really like different kinds of wordplay. So, of course, there's like anagrams, which is when you rearrange the letters to spell different things. Um, And I like palindromes, which are spelled the same forwards and backwards. But Mm -hmm. um, as I've gotten more into crossword puzzles, I've learned about other more like esoteric kinds of wordplay. And the one that I've really gotten excited about in the past year or so is something called super vocalics. So... In the language and wordplay world, vocal means vowel. And so super vocalics are a word or a name or a phrase that contains all of the vowels, but only one time each. So mm. all, all the vowels have to be there, but there can't be any doubled up appearances of the vowels. So for example, the word education is a good like starter super vocalic. It has one mm. E, one U, one A, one I, and one O. Exactly. And okay. Then I'll, I'll just blaze through a few more examples just to kind of like set the table. I got I got a question about these though. Are they worth more if they also include Y? That's they such, got the sometimes Y. Is that like a bonus super vocalic? That's such a great question. That's a and super duper vocalic. There's a name for this too. Um, oh, okay. Shit. They're they're but they're like they're a subcategory of super vocalics. And yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, they're the premium. They're the top of the they're the top tier. Yeah, they're like yeah. right, exactly, exactly. So um so another really good example of us of one that has a Y in it is the word facetiously. Mm, that's and a cop out, just adding Lee at the end. It is. But <laughs> I'll make it up to you. That one's special because it contains those vowel letters in alphabetical order. Oh, shit. Yeah. So it's also Is that the only one? um, That has them in alphabetical order? Yeah. I think it's the most common word that has them in alphabetical order, though I'm not an expert on this and there might be other ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, Can I blast you with a few more examples? Oh, absolutely. Um, So Julia Roberts' name is super vocalic. Um, 
another good name that's super vocalic is Austin Powers. Um, uh, Reform Judaism, the religious tradition I grew up in, that phrase is super vocalic. There's another special subcategory called a perfect five. And that is a word or a phrase that's five words long and contains only one of the vowels in each word. And the best example of this kind of super vocalic is the rapper Ski Mask the Slump God. Ski Mask the Slump God. I like Ski Mask the Slump God. <laughs> it's a great name even before you know that it's a perfect five. And then, <laughs> But because, now that we yeah, know that fact. Yeah, it takes it to a whole new level. And because the name super vocalic was made up by a clever word person, the name super vocalic itself is super vocalic. It is meta super vocalic. Oh, wow. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, shit. So in preparation for this podcast, I went uh -huh. on some sneaker blogs um, and pulled the names of some super vocalic sneakers because I thought it would be like a nice overlap of what the Crossword Show is all about and what your podcast is all about. So okay. Okay. with your permission, I will run through a few of those. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So the first thing I have to say is that um, I'll also be curious, by the way, to know if you guys know about these shoes, because to me, they're all like just meaningless data. But surely mm -hmm. some of them are going to be more famous than others. So, um, OK, so I guess Billie Eilish and Nike uh, are making an Air Force One together and mm -hmm. they're releasing a new model or color or something. I hope you'll tell me called the Sequoia. Um, and the okay. word Sequoia is is super vocalic. Can you contextualize that a little bit for me? What is the Sequoia model? I think it's just a colorway of Air Force One, right? Yeah. I yeah, it it's is. just like an Air Force One in a fun color. And I didn't he do something? Is it Velcro? It I might be know. Velcro. Mm. Oh, this is it's a good thing you got on screen. Yeah, here. good thing we <laughs> only can. I think we might just be staring. The, the whole video is just going to be people screaming at or looking at the screen that I'm clicking around trying to find it i even googled <laughs> it with my phone and that there's be... supposed to be a button that is just not there mm. uh, so well that's... either way let's look up the billy eilish um, air force one sequoia i'm gonna drop a link to you guys if you want it's super vocalic mm -hmm. um, just the sequoia part i should be clear the billy eilish nike stuff is just all yeah. over the place yeah but... see there okay. it is it's a brown velcro air force one high mm. Yeah. yeah, Sequoia. Okay. Sequoia. Sequoia is a very efficient super vocalic. It like barely has any other letters, so that's like a prized specimen mm -hmm. for that to be in a shoe name. Mm, mm -hmm. That's top tier super vocalic. Yeah, that's like okay. that. Li that lights up the sensors. We like that one a lot. Okay, <laughs> so moving on to models of shoes that I found. Um, I don't. Should I like put these in the chat? Like, is there? I, I guess, guess I'll just say it. I, but it's like it's like not working now. <laughs> like I literally can't do anything. I just have you on a little We're tiny, just stuck in it somehow. I don't know. There's you know what? a button. Yeah, you can just keep telling us. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. We'll do it that way. Also, I <laughs> yeah. love that a I love that a B story to this podcast is that Bjorn is just stuck in this Zoom. Call. I'm so <laughs> upset right now. <laughs> it's like... Bjorn's gonna be calling Zoom and asking for our fourteen ninety five back. Yeah. Just be like, Nick I paid for this shit. Just delightful pleasant <laughs> yeah we're just bjorn's. i'm learning i'm learning new words about words yeah. and bjorn's is over there ready to ready to sue apple and zoom at the same time <laughs> take the it's equipment like, you bastards yeah. you made me update <laughs> should, that'll pay for this studio for a few years <laughs> all right so what's another okay. super vocalic shoe so i'm glad you asked about whys because those are going to be a thing um mm, and we'll good start deal. sometimes why is my favorite vowel yep so we'll start you can't off with decide the... what the hell it wants to be. <laughs> so <laughs> relatable. Um, the, so the Puma Velocity is the first thing that I will bring to the table. Okay. The Puma Velocity. That sounds um, like a good shoe to mention in a rap song. I feel like a lot of things, Puma Velocity has a good, it just seems like a good word with a lot of hard, Hard syllables and it ends with a T, which probably is easy to rhyme, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a rapper. I've just listened to a lot of rap. <laughs> I've tried to rap and I'm so fucking bad at it. You can't come off the dome for Puma Velocity. I feel like you got a. I feel like you had an inkling. I don't know. I mean, say, look at my Puma <laughs> Velocities. Let's you trade. have as an atrocity. Yeah, let's trade kicks for some shoe reciprocity. <laughs> oh shit. Oh. 
Oh, he got me. <laughs> <laughs> Battle clinched. <laughs> Who won? So, Who's next? <laughs> you decide. <laughs> um, one thing I'll say that's slightly cheaty about the Puma Velocity is that they all seem to have the word nitro after them. So I don't know if we have yeah. to count that as part of the name. And if Velocity we do, kinda, nitro. It oh, that over. The... It reuses I and O. Yeah. So let me let me rein it in a little bit. Okay. Um, so the next one I'm going to put on your radar, and these are okay. So the next one is the um, I'm putting it in the chat, the Asics OC Runner, and I'm pretty sure this one is clean, i.e., no other vowels sneaking in there around the margins or anything like that. Mm. I think it's just called the Asics OC Runner. Ooh, that's a dope shoe. I might get those, dude. And you'll be able to dazzle the people who compliment you on them. With oh, those are fat. fire. I'm going to get a pair of those. They're like 50 bucks. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 need, I haven't had a new pair of shoes in a couple months because nothing's dropped, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to snag the OC runners. The deep cut. I can't Hell tell yeah. you how sincerely, like disproportionately gratified I feel by you getting excited about a shoe that I brought to your attention. It is <laughs> no, those are fire. Those it's Pumas mi- were those Pumas were trash. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, those were not good. Wow. Those were an atrocity. The Puma Velocity <laughs> was an atrocity. Was yes. An atrocity. If you see some value in that, it's lost on me. Oh. But this hey. maybe I do have bars, dude. I gotta change my career. <laughs> Fuck mechanical engineering, dude. I gotta <laughs> I gotta drop some fucking verses. Drop an album. <laughs> okay. So next up, we have the Saucony Ride 15. Dropping her in the chat. I like this one because it includes a um, number in there. It just kind of like is nice variety and texture for the otherwise super vocalic name. How do you spell it? I can't access the chat because I'm still stuck in. Oh, S-A-U-C-O-N-Y. And then Ride 15. Ah, there it is. These here. Ooh. I, I'm going to go ahead and call it trash as opposed to fire. <laughs> no. There you go. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, we got even, in, even in like Zach's a hot a color. Now. <laughs> like, Zach knows what's up. Okay, the colorway is a little better on that on that model, but um, I still yeah, think that, it... It's still trash. Yeah. yeah. The soul is too... It's too, like, daddish. Mmm. I'm it looks interested. like it would be too comfortable. <laughs> too comfortable. I'm it's interested. too. It's it's too function over form. Yes. You know. Yes. Dead-ish. There's kind of a delicate balance there with shoes, and I feel like, you know, that the form over function, like all, all the coolest shoes are mostly uncomfortable, but there's there's some that really toe the line, and they're like comfy and awesome. And I saw this some- one. Looks like it's just comfy. This I one's not right. awesome. <laughs> it, it almost makes me wish they didn't offer the different color schemes just so they, you know, aren't trying to be something they're not. This is a funky yeah. shoe, not a funky. This should be white on white or black on black. And, you know, you bought this alone. to fucking mow the lawn. <laughs> you don't give a fuck what this looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't buy this shit to stunt at the club. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Yeah. So this is my big closer. Now, I have to say this one's kind of a cheat because it's not a, it's like not a kick. I think it's a soccer shoe, actually. But the mm-hmm. Super Vocalic is so bonkers that I had to go for it. So, you ready? I feel to- like, just real yeah. quick, a soccer shoe is more of a kick than just about any other kick. Okay, but this has like cleats. Because <laughs> it's for kicking. I get it. I just got it. Oh, I, just got oh, it. <laughs> I got it. You must also That's... know Mike Kaplan. Uh, okay. I, I do. There's this poster on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bjorn, you ready on the type? Yeah, I am. Okay. It is a Nike Phantom. Yep. G2 Club MG. G2 Club MG. All right. Yeah. There it is. Oh, it's it's name so, is so pointy. Long. <laughs> but yet it's somehow a super vocalic. 
It is like they managed to only use each vowel once, even in that long ass name. Yes, it is really <laughs> pointy. Wow, that's un- like you're gonna pop the soccer ball if you kick that's it. With it. Someone, <laughs> someone local here in Portland came up with that name. <laughs> and shout out to them over at Nike. Someone out in Beaverton like was the sitting Ferrari. in their office. It looks like it looks like a Ferrari or, or no no it uh, does. like a uh, not Ferrari a uh, um, Lamborghini or something. It does. It's very sleek. Yeah, like it's so like it's definitely like literally a soccer shoe. Like you could not wear this just in life, right? <sighs> but you know, if I was if I was you know a European communist and <laughs> played soccer, I'd probably wear that shit. There's a lot <laughs> but of I'm an American that, that drives here. pickup trucks. I don't be playing no soccer. <laughs> I thought you were saying that somebody in Portland named it because it like had a fancy, high maintenance kind of name. But you're, I now realize you're literally saying that Nike is located near Portland. Yeah, yeah Nike it's... Nike headquarters is in Beaverton, which is like the the uh, what what is that? What's the main suburb of LA? Hmm. I can't. I can't. I don't know. One. It's I don't know. <laughs> Beaverton. That's the that's Glendale. the valley to our <laughs> nice. LA. Oh, oh. Or like, know what it is? It's the it's the San Jose to San Francisco, because it's oh. where all the tech shit goes on, mm. and it's and it's like over a hill. Thanks, guys. So, You're making yeah. me feel at home by talking about <laughs> California, where I live. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to get you some references. You know, I'm professional. <laughs> All right. all right, we're we only have a few minutes, but I ne- I got a bunch of epic rap battle questions. Yeah, let's talk about epic rap battles. Yeah, I was I loved epic rap battles. I don't know when, like whenever that I first found that maybe 2011, 2012. I think I found it when it first started coming out. Yeah. Check so man. were you there at the very start? Yes. Of epic well, rap battles? so I'll just say that um, epic rap battles of history is a mm-hmm. web series that I've written for for. 10 years, more than 10 years at this point. And, oh, wow. um, and I've acted in uh, numerous battles. And in its heyday, it was like a huge thing. Um, it was wild to be part of something that viral. Now, as I said to you guys earlier, I am a tiny cop. Whoa, Bjorn I figured found it, out. it I'm sorry. Oh, no, <laughs> he's listening. Back, baby. <laughs> it was in the perspective, because we do a screen share on a TV, and I realized that it was. Mm. Okay, we got there. All right. <laughs> so people are just looking at me, just clicking on stuff for a while. <laughs> Bjorn, it must feel so good right now. It must be like a, <laughs> a piece of food has gone from between your teeth. Well, for all our I'm audio so listeners, which is the majority of them, <laughs> um, if you check out the YouTube version, apparently it's going to be really entertaining. <laughs> just be cl- it'll frantically just, clicking. It'll be on Bjorn's <laughs> expeditions around the internet <laughs> with a soundtrack of of me and Zach talking about <laughs> rap music and uh, and words about words. Oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt because uh, <laughs> I am right. very curious about this stuff too. Yeah, so epic rap battles of history. Yeah, so I I came on. Um, I knew so the two guys who invented it. I'm just you know I'm I'm just a writer and occasional actor. Mm-hmm. Um, not just I play a big role, but it's it's two guys. It's uh, Lloyd Alquist, aka Epic Lloyd, and Pete Shukoff, aka Nice Peter. And so and that's I'm, a dick joke, right? I just want to get that. I don't think it is a dick joke. He's it's not because nice Peter. Nice not Peter a, sounds like a mass. Like, isn't a Peter another word for a dick? Definitely. To me, that sounds like a dick joke. Here's what it is. He's not yeah. oblivious to the, um, you know, to, the connotation. But yeah, it's, it's ultimately he's like, nah, it's because I'm nice. I know it sounds like it's a dick <laughs> joke, but it is. It is. That's what it is. So okay. um, they started making battles. They started blowing up and mm-hmm. then they were like, we need we need to make more of these and we need friends who do comedy and rap to get involved. So the first battle I wrote on was um, Gandalf versus Dumbledore. And then okay. um, I've been I've been around since then. OK. Yeah. You know, I was I watched a bunch of them today and I was like, holy oh. shit, these were so good. Thanks, I, I, like I I used to watch them all the time. Mm-hmm. Like. I remember. I think it was one of the ones you were on, the Doc Brown, Doctor Who yeah. was one of my favorites. And these, I just, around that time, like I watched them so much, they'd get stuck in my head. And as a vegan, you'll be mad at me for this. But I remember that was a song that was stuck in my head one morning when I was just out duck hunting. I grew up in Montana. Wow. We both did. I was sitting on a river 
in waiters in December. It was cold as fuck. I was sitting there waiting for ducks to arrive so I could, you know, shoot them out of the sure. sky like the murderous animal that I am. <laughs> and uh, and I was just thinking, like, great, Scott, you're great, not. You know, I was, like, thinking fucking wow, epic rap man. battles was stuck in my head. You know I don't know why song. I remember that. that yeah, is... I, well, I watched it again today. I like that there's, like, super clever bars and then just a dick joke right after the other. Like, it's yeah. clever bars, and then you go, so Dalek my balls. Yeah. You're like, what What? what does Dalek mean? Eh, it means lick my nuts. <laughs> 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 Which is just a fun, like, you go from, like, clever, clever, clever dick jokes, because it's rap, you know? It's a nice collaborative process, because I'm always trying to make the lines as, like, clever and, like, genius annotation-y mm -hmm. as I possibly can. And those guys are very funny improv comedians, and... um they really know how to like throw those little things in. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's always a like tug of war where I'm like, no, let's put in as many syllables as we can possibly fit into that space of music. And they're like, we're going to make a balls joke mm -hmm. to close the verse because that's what people like. So it's been, it's <laughs> been very educational actually to um, participate in that. Yeah. So that actually leads into one of the questions I prepared, which is when you guys would each person who was playing a character, would you primarily write your own stuff so it really was sort of a battle? Or did everybody have a part in everybody's rap? The battle aspect is only in the world of the characters. Um, okay. We have like a writing staff, usually me, Pete, and Lloyd, but with many other people on the way, mm -hmm. including a guy named Dante, um, who I wouldn't want to hear this and think, hey, why didn't I get mentioned? Um, mm, okay. So, uh, yeah. Shout out Dante. Yeah, shout out Dante and Mike, <laughs> Mike Batet. Anyways, um, yeah, the battles are only between the characters. I would say that if like I'm playing a character, I'm gonna get more leeway to say, I, I'm not gonna say that line, or like I don't mm -hmm. like that joke as much as this one. They're very like, yeah, 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 do the verse that you think is the best version, but they'll definitely opine on my verses and be like, I think this joke's better. So okay. um, it's very collaborative all the way through, and it goes in the other direction too. Like, they'll rap verses that somebody else wrote almost in their entirety. Okay. Okay. So what about the guest features? Like, Because yeah. I know Watsky was in a bunch of them. Yeah. I was a big fan of Watsky. I saw him in Bozeman when he came oh, through in, like, 2015. He's actually the only rapper I've ever seen live who just had a full band play all of his beats rather than, like, just having a DJ. Yeah. Which I thought was cool. And it was, like, he put on a hell of a show. Oh, he's like, such an I really like, performer. Yeah, I really like Watsky. And then you guys had Snoop. Fucking Snoop played Moses. <laughs> and Dude. I think Snoop might have written that might have written that verse. Man. That, it just felt like a Snoop verse to me. He did not. And I he will did tell not? You something. Yeah. So you guys wrote a Snoop verse that sounded like Snoop and then Snoop did it? We wrote a verse and we were like we were like, there's no way Snoop is gonna say these lines that we've written for him. <laughs> and then not because they were like, we we're trying to pull something over on him or like mm -hmm. prank him. We just like, there's a line in there that I slash we are still so proud of where mm -hmm. he starts off a verse where he says, with so much drama in Israel, BC, it's kind of hard speaking directly to the geo single D. Uh -huh. I, anyways, um, we loved it. And we were like, there's no way he's going to say this. A, it's like. <laughs> a take on classic lyrics of his that made him famous and also yeah. it's like so nerdy and then he <laughs> showed up and not only was he like cool let's go but he like <laughs> had his own version of like how he was gonna say it and had clearly worked with the demo and knew what to do i was blown away by his professionalism and willing to play ball that's awesome that's one of my favorite that's i think that's my other favorite like that may be the one I've watched the most times. I showed that to my girlfriend and then had to show her gin and juice so it made sense. <laughs> right, like, right, literally right. that bar. I was like, "That's a f like this is so genius." <laughs> and it's it's she's not a big rap fan, so she's like, "Okay, cool, you know, what, whatever." <laughs> but I'm like, never gonna like this as much as you do, but at least I am. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I had to go find the Gourds gin and juice just to be like, a lot of people have had fun. Oh, with yeah, song. yeah. That's the like, bluegrass one. <laughs> the, yeah, the country one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's. <laughs> did you, I, I'm just curious, did you come up through like improv, like musical improv, or were you just like freestyling a lot? Or You know, I, I, I really just liked rap and then started doing comedy kind of by accident because I didn't have another plan. And my friends were like, let's try this group. 
And then eventually the idea came to pair them. It's all been very accidental and not intentional. And I have no improv background. Oh, okay. Yeah. I took a couple classes at UCB. Who hasn't? I did. I yeah. Did. <laughs> I mean, right. <laughs> everyone was Sort like, of assumed. <laughs> I have to take this class. <laughs> All right. So more epic rap battles. What was your favorite battle? Like whether you were in it or just to write on it. Like what was your favorite one? Um, the most recent one I appeared in was, um, it, it came out about a year ago. And it's uh, three action movie characters named John. So it's John mm. Rambo and John, John McClane Wick. from um, Die Hard. And then I played John Wick. And um, normally in epic rap battles, I get cast as like a, um, a, a nerd. Like mm -hmm. the, the characters I've played were have been like Albert Einstein, Doc Brown, who is himself a take on Albert Einstein. I was cast as <laughs> Egon Spangler from Ghostbusters. Literally, <laughs> they, I went to makeup and they were like, you're good. Uh, <laughs> you were Stephen King. He's I played not Stephen a nerd. King. He, he I mean, did he's like, like a, a ton bookish, of cocaine. Yeah, and crashed a motorcycle. <laughs> but he's still kind of a nerd and like bookish. Um, yeah. So like playing Alexander the Great was pretty cool, but I got killed right away. I played Wayne Gretzky, but like he's not a fun mm. jock to be. Being John <laughs> Wick, I got to be like a badass and like mm -hmm. uh, a good an anti. I mean, he's not an anti-hero, but like he's so murderous. So yeah. um, and like you know, I'm like a vegan and peaceful and stuff. So it was just really <laughs> fun to be like a badass, violent character. Um, so I think that was and also writing the verse. Like it was a really fun verse to write. Okay. Yeah, I, th I feel like I've watched that one, but that it's like one of the newer ones. And like when I was really into it was like when I was in college, yeah. like 2012, yeah. 13, 14. Like those ones were the ones that I've watched like over and over and knew all the words. To and shit. <laughs> Different era. And yeah. also, I think like I think I like doing um, the Wick one because it's the most mm -hmm. recent. And you know how like like as you get older, you can like appreciate, you know, more what you enjoy about things and you can like appreciate things more. So I was like, mm. oh, my my like tastes are better now. So I'm going to like have fun more doing this. And so it was like a more enjoyable. I, I appreciated it more than I used yeah. to when just like shoot them and I'd be like, oh, God, this is uncomfortable. Oh, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. OK, I'm going to have to listen to that one again. And like with that in mind mm -hmm. and like see or maybe watch some of your old ones and then watch that one and see the mm. like the growth. Mm. Yeah, man. That'd be kind of my cool. journey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. What's your favorite bar? Like, do you have a favorite bar? One that sticks out in your head that you wrote? Um, Because there's <clears throat> so many just hilarious bars in mm. epic rap battles. Like it's. From a comedy standpoint, like Bjorn, I don't know if you've watched a ton of them, but I, like I have, you I, have. I watched several of them. I, okay. I did watch the John Wick one. From a comedy standpoint, recently. they're so brilliant. There's so much fun wordplay and like jokes and references and shit. Yeah, they're like, jo they're very joke. I love how they're joke forward and like I love a joke forward movie. I don't mm. think people tend to appreciate those as much as I do. Like I've been in theaters where people are looking back at me laughing like an idiot, just cackling. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a comedy. You're supposed to be enjoying yourself. <laughs> where it's like joke forward. Yeah. Like, like I love all of the Lonely Island stuff. Like, yeah. Uh, like pop star. I saw that thing in theaters and mm -hmm. I thought it was brilliant. The layers in which they were like parroting. And nobody appreciated that one. I don't know. I feel like that one was like very underappreciated that like they basically made a whole album for the movie as the character. I thought it was brilliant. But um, and so like I, I always have appreciated the epic rap battles and like all of the like comedy music. I mean, even growing up like, mm -hmm. being obsessed with like Weird Al and like, yeah, no, Weird Al's know. fire. Mm. Uh, but, <laughs> I, I even hate to admit this. He's one. been on an epic rap I, battle. Was he? Yeah. Who did he play? Was he Mozart or something? No, Mozart was someone else. He played Isaac Newton. He oh, did play right. Isaac Newton. There was Mozart versus Skrillex was a really good one. Yeah, that's think, right. Was that just Lloyd and Peter? Um, yes, that was Lloyd and Peter. And then actually one time they performed it at a award show or something and like Skrillex mm -hmm. came out and 
danced around. Oh, it was that's dope. <laughs> it was an interesting cool. time when ce- celebrities started becoming available because the series was viral. And so people like wanted to get involved. So they said some really cool nodes. Um, there were like people who wanted to do one, but like Ooh. wanted to do a character that they didn't think would work. And so they were like, yeah, we're good. And I was, I remember being very impressed that they had that kind of confidence in themselves and weren't like star fucky about it. Okay. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. Um, I'll tell a quick Weird Al story and then I'll give you an answer to your bar question, which I think okay. is not going to be definitive. But No, for sure. That's for Weird Al, it was actually one of the only times I've ever headlined a comedy club. I was headlining um, uh, some a club in Chattanooga, Tennessee and, uh, and a weekend while we were writing that one. And they were like, Zach, um, I had done a lot of the writing on that Weird Al verse and mm-hmm. they were like, will you go ahead and demo out his verse for us to send to him? Usually they would record the demos, but they were like, you've been in the guts on this one a little more, like demo it out. And so I recorded a demo of the verse Weird Al would do, and I didn't want to overdo it, but I did like a light Weird Al impression, just like, here's how I think you would perform it, Mr. Yankovic, kind of level of respect, just like a little subtle here and there. And then they were like, hey, come to the studio for Weird Al's like recording session. And uh, so I just hung out and, you know, just hung back and let them do their thing. But when Weird Al got in the booth, I could tell that he was doing an impression of me and my demo, which was me doing an impression of him, which was (laughs) formed from listening to past Weird Al do his thing on his own. And I just was like, this is, if 13 year old me could, conceive of this happening his head would explode <laughs> that is amazing. oh that's awesome mm. yeah so favorite bar and then we'll probably have to wrap up and get out of here yeah uh but this has been super fun super fun for me too thank you guys um i will say that i would really want to look at a list to give you a good answer to this but that's not what you want I'll, so i'll just give you an answer now the qu- the one that popped into my head when you asked for this Mm-hmm. is um, in my Alexander the Great verse, there's a part where I just get, I went on like a syllable run that starts with like, kudos, it's Greek for the glory I got for winning every single war that I fought. So this will be straightforward. I'll take up this sword that I brought and slice you in half like the Gordian knot, which is an Alexander the Great thing. Anyways, it goes yeah. on and on from there. But I think like, that's the one that just like unbidden will kind of like jump into my head when I'm hanging around. Nice. Yeah, that one's, and that's, like, very your style of, like, really playing with words and, like, like hitting all these syllables and, like, rhyming. It's, like, rhyming not, but, like, in so many different ways. That's an awesome bar. Thanks, Nick. I feel seen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> before we close, can I give you one yeah. last super vocalic? It's about you. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Um, size 10 podcast guys. Um is one and it even has a y in it that's holy so awesome. shit that's so cool i didn't even know <laughs> and it only works if you use the number 10 it wouldn't work if you wrote out the word 10 but look i mean i've been staring but at we use the number to... 10 in the logo yeah so it's perfect <laughs> all right well yeah if you guys want to see zach and based on this episode there's no reason you wouldn't Damn you right. guys got to go to mississippi studios Wednesday, October 19th. Go to crosswordshow.com. You'll see Zach. You'll see Shane. You'll see Arlo. It'll be dope. You should go do that. You should follow Zach on social media. Bjorn, you want to take us out? Yeah. Hey, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you like the show, please like and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, or on our Instagram. We post on there. Make sure and comment. Have fun. Uh, and big thank you to Zach for coming on the show. Thank you guys so much for having me. This was super fun. Yeah, this was awesome. Thank you so much for doing it. This was really fun. Sneakers.